So here we're going to talk about uh, the typical opioid synapse. And uh, although there's really no such thing as a typical opioid synapse because there's so many variables and um, different transmitters involved, um, it's uh, going to be a good basic overview. Is kind of the basic uh, functionality of how these um, opioid synapses work. And so um, foundationally, I'll sort of go over my model here, um, just sort of uh, explain what we got. And, and so in this area right here, we have um, our axon um, that leads from, from the cell body that is in, uh, invisible and off to the left um, that leads into our presynaptic axon terminal. Um, over here on the right, uh, we're going to have our uh, postsynaptic neuron, um, which is uh, basically going to be our uh, effector cell. Um, and uh, we'll uh, hold the uh, receptors for um, the specific uh, opioids um, that will you know, stim stimulate uh, the cell. And here in between uh, these two, um, between the presynaptic axon terminal and the postsynaptic uh, neuron is our synaptic gap. So there's a few different um, a few differences between uh, the opioid synapses and um, the synapses that uh, function for the other basic transmitters. Um, one of them is uh, the fact that uh, opioid synapses, uh, the uh, ligands um, for the endog endogenous opioids, uh, they are actually uh, proteins as opposed to uh, non-protein molecules. And uh, because of that, they need to be uh, synthesized and built uh, within the cell body and ultimately transported into the presynaptic axon terminal. We have about five different um, main families of opioid, uh, endogenous opioids. Um, and uh, they uh, are basically um, our endorphins. Okay. And our endomorphins. and our enkephalins, and our dinorphins, and nociceptin. And so these are actually all broken down into um, subgroups even, which we'll go over in uh, future videos. And um, they, for the most part, most of them have uh, affinity for multiple opioid receptors, um, but more or not um, certain ones of these um, will actually have greater affinity for uh, specific um, receptors. And uh, like I said, I'm saving all that for later. And so what typically happens um, within these uh, synapses is the, the actual um, endogenous opioids are, like I said, they are um, built within the cell body and they are transported um, from the axon terminal, um, by the axon into the presynaptic axon terminal. And so they come and they travel down here and they end up finding their place um, somewhere within the, um, the cytoplasm of the presynaptic axon terminal. And let me kind of just get these scratched up there. Okay. And so what happens um, at this point in time is they hang out within the cytoplasm until the arrival of an action potential. And so this action potential um, will occur and uh, that stimulates um, just the same as uh, most of our uh, different uh, synapses um, stimulates uh, these voltage-gated um, calcium channels that uh, find their home on the um, presynaptic axon terminal. So we've got our voltage-gated calcium channels down here and um, our calcium. And this causes an influx of calcium uh, from the extracellular space to the uh, intracellular space. And when that occurs, it causes these uh, vesicles to uh, basically fuse um, to the um, presynaptic axon terminal. And um, when that occurs, 
we have a uh, exocytosis of our endogenous opioid into our synaptic gap. And it becomes a little more simple here um, in the essence that really um, there is only um, binding of um, the uh, opioid or the, um, the transmitter to the postsynaptic neuron. And most of the time these postsynaptic neurons are actually not uh, endorphin neurons or dynorphin uh, neurons or cell bodies or whatnot. Um, they're some other um, type of neuron and it causes a response um, uh, after activation of those receptors. So that'll come over and they'll activate these receptors. But unlike um, other uh, synapses, there is no transport mechanism um, for it to actually make its way back into the cell body. So it isn't transported back into the cell body. And unlike our other synapses, there's um, also no, um, there isn't any uh, specific enzymes that will metabolize um, these, uh, the, the uh, endorphins or endorphins or enclephalins um, within it. And so what happens is they either uh, stimulate the receptor or they are broken down within the synaptic gap um, by uh, proteases, okay? And so we don't really know exactly um, which, uh, what exactly is broken down. I mean, it's, uh, we just know that the, this is a theory that they're broken down by these proteases within um, the synaptic gap and those metabolites are ultimately um, distributed and uh, excreted um, through the um, body systems. And so when these uh, vesicles, they empty out into the cell body, um, so we got over here um, how this vesicle um, was able to actually uh, dump its contents into it. Uh, what happens is it uh, will basically um, end up making its way back to the cell body. Um, and I kind of messed that up here. So I want to pretend like I can move this over here. Okay, so it'll make its way out, and then a new one will come back and replace it. And that's sort of the cycle of what occurs um, within the uh, opioid synapses. Um, and it's, it's a little more simplified and um, in some senses. But you know, just the take-home point is that the, the um, we still need an action potential to stimulate a release of, or to stimulate the calcium, uh, the voltage-gated calcium channels, um, to uh, release the, uh, the the contents of the uh, vesicle into the synaptic gap, and um, the difference also being that these transmitters are proteins, and so because they're proteins, they need to be um, built within the cell body and then transported through the axon to the presynaptic terminal. Uh, there's no transporters along the, um, the presynaptic axon terminal to bring it back into the cell, um, and there's no specific enzymes that will actually metabolize um, these different um, transmitters and that they are actually just broken down by proteases within the synaptic gap um, uh, or they stimulate the receptors on the effector cell. And there you have it. Um, that's the opioid um, opioid synapse uh, as, a, as a basic component and um, this will lead to a more in-depth explanation of exactly what kind of receptors are stimulated, um, exactly where these um, different uh, endogenous opioids have a role and a place and which specific um, medications uh, will actually uh, stimulate what receptors and how. And so those will be in future videos and hopefully this will serve as a good foundation. Thank you very much.